I think it's time someone said it. You're using it wrong. Samsung's S Pen has been around for years, yet I still hear people say they don't understand why you need a stylus to do something that your finger could do just as well. The problem is that the S Pen is not just a stylus, and the average person can get a ton of value and practical use out of the S Pen, and I'm gonna prove it in this video. You're probably aware that the S Pen has Bluetooth functionality and can be used to take pictures by simply pressing the S Pen button while you're in the camera app. But what you might not know is that the S Pen also supports gestures where you can hold the S Pen button down and draw clockwise to zoom in. And if you keep holding the S Pen button down when you do that, it'll continue to zoom in until you release the button. You can also draw a counterclockwise circle to zoom out, hold the button and swipe left or right to switch between your different camera modes. And you can even switch between the front and rear cameras by holding down the S Pen button and swiping up or down. And if you ever forget what the gestures do, you can just hover the S Pen over the Air Command icon, and it'll give you a little pop-up to remind you what the gestures are. And if you tap the Air Command icon, then tap Camera, then tap one of the gestures, you can actually change what it does. These gestures expand well past the camera app. Let's say your phone is connected to Bluetooth speakers, but the battery is almost dead, so you need to leave it on a charger. You can take your S Pen out and keep that with you. Then you can hold the S Pen button down and swipe to the right to go forward a track, swipe to the left to go back a track, single press the S Pen button to pause the music, or single press again to resume the music. You can increase the volume by holding the S Pen button down and swiping up, and as long as you hold that S Pen button down, the volume will continue to increase. And you can also lower the volume by holding the S Pen button down and swiping down. If you're going to be keeping the S Pen away from your phone like this for any extended period of time, I highly recommend turning on this next feature. Go to Settings, Advanced, S Pen, Scroll to the bottom and enable warn if S Pen is left behind. If this is enabled and you accidentally pick up your phone and walk away without putting your S Pen back in its silo, you'll get a warning message on your phone reminding you to put it back in. If you open up the Air Command menu by either tapping the Air Command icon or by simply pressing the S Pen button while you're hovering the S Pen over the screen, you get access to some really powerful features. One of the features that I use most often is called Magnify. And if I tap this, then hover my S Pen over the screen, I'll magnify that portion of the screen. This is particularly useful for me because I wear reading glasses. And if I don't have my glasses on me and I'm trying to read a quick text message, I can just open this up quickly, hover over the text message, and read it with ease. You also get four levels of zoom, all the way up to 300%, but if you don't need it that big, you can just drop to 150% and get just a little bit of zooming. And if you want a larger zoom window, just tap these expand arrows and you'll make the box a little bit bigger. And if you want to shrink that box back down, just tap the shrink arrows. Write on calendar is great for anyone who prefers to handwrite their calendar appointments. This will open up your calendar and let you start handwriting immediately. Now obviously these cells are a bit too small to write in precisely, so you can just pinch to zoom and get right into one of the days so it's a lot easier to write your notes in that day. And if you select this pen icon in the bottom left corner, you'll be able to choose from a bunch of different pen styles, change the pen thickness, and even the pen color. And for some of them, like with the marker pen, you can even change the opacity. If you want more colors, you can swipe over to see a bunch more, or you can tap this four color grid here to choose any color you'd like. If you wanted to get an ultra specific color, you could tap spectrum and drag to whichever color you'd like. If you want to erase anything, just hold the S Pen button down and swipe across it. If you accidentally erase too much, you can tap undo. And if you tap the eraser icon, then tap it once more, you get two different erase options. You can erase by stroke, which erases the entire stroke, or you can erase by an area and change the size of that area. So now if I erase this, it's only going to erase the little pieces that it touches. And if you want to start completely over, you can tap erase all handwriting. If you want to move your handwritten notes from one calendar day to a different day, just tap the selection icon here at the bottom and draw around the note you want to move, then move it over to another day. If you tap the selection icon again, you can change from lasso mode, which is what I just showed you, to rectangle mode, which allows you to just draw a box around what you want to select. One notable limitation with using handwriting for calendar appointments is that you can't get reminders using this method. If you wanted to get a notification reminding you of that appointment, you will have to set that appointment up the traditional way. One more thing I'd like to point out is that if you don't use this write on calendar shortcut from the Air Command menu, 
and instead just open up the calendar directly, you won't be able to start writing in any of these cells. Instead, you first have to tap this pen icon in the upper right corner, then you'll be able to start writing again. And once you're done writing in your events, just tap save. Translate is incredibly useful when you quickly need to translate something, like if you go to a restaurant and you see a word that you don't know in a menu, you can just select the language of the menu, then hover over the word to figure out what it is. In this case, this word means shrimp. And if you want to translate a group of words, just tap the T in the upper left corner, and that'll switch to this text icon. And now if I hover over something, it'll select a group of text, and I can resize this box to select more or less text. And this feature can even be used within the camera app without even taking a picture. Smart Select lets you extract text from any image. This is particularly useful if somebody sends you a coupon code and you want to copy that directly into a website. All you have to do is draw a box around the coupon code, then tap this T icon, and it'll extract the text. From there, you can tap Copy to copy all the text, or you can hold the S Pen button down and select just a portion of the text to copy if that's what you need to do. You can also pin this image so that it stays on top of any other application, which would be useful if the image is too blurry for the text extraction to work and you want to manually copy the text over instead. And this pinned image can be moved anywhere around on your screen, and if you tap it, you can even minimize it. Glance is similar to pinning an image, except it pins it to the bottom, and if you hover your S Pen over it, it brings the window back up. And you can even interact with that window as well. Then when you move your S Pen away, it goes back down to the corner. And you can move this to any of the four corners of your screen. And this is more so useful for keeping track of things like a sports team score while also doing other things on your phone. And when you want to get rid of the glance window, just drag it over to the trash can in the top center. Bixby Vision is similar to Translate, but it actually selects a much larger area. And if I tap this T down here, it'll extract all the text, and then I can also translate it to any other language. From here, I can even copy or share the text, or have it spoken out loud. And this box is resizable if you want to select more or less text. Bixby Vision can also be used on images. Let's say you found some sort of a lizard and you didn't know what it was. You could hover your S Pen over it, then tap the image icon, and you'll find similar images on Pinterest. And depending on the image, sometimes you'll be told right away exactly what it is. So as you can see here, it detected that this is a spotted salamander, and if I hover my S Pen over this text, you can see that it gives you more information about it. And lastly, if you tap it, it takes you to general search results. If you see a shortcut here that you don't use and you want to replace it with something more useful, just tap Settings, then scroll down until you find Shortcuts and tap that. And that brings you to a new screen where you can select up to 10 shortcuts. So if I wanted to replace Live Messages with Coloring, I'll just tap the minus on Live Messages, then tap Coloring. And you could also long press these and drag them wherever you'd like. Scrolling a bit further down allows me to add any application to one of these shortcuts as well. So if I want a quick access to a different notes application, or maybe a drawing application if you're an artist, you'll be able to set that up here. By default, long pressing the S Pen button opens up the camera app. But if that's not useful to you, you can change it by opening the Air Command menu, tapping Settings, Air Actions, then hold down Pen Button 2. So from here, instead of opening up the camera, you can have it either go home, back, or open up your recent apps. You can have it quickly launch any of these S Pen features, or you could have it open any application you have installed on your device. If you pull the S Pen out while the screen is off, you open up something called Screen Off Memo. This is perfect for when you need to create a quick grocery list when you're on your way out the door. Once you've written your list, you can pin it to your Always On Display by tapping this pin icon at the top. Then just tap Pin to Always On Display to confirm. And now that list is going to stay pinned to my Always On Display, so I can quickly see it just by taking my phone out of my pocket at the grocery store. And if you need to change the list, just double tap it, and it brings you back to the note. You can also change the color of the text by tapping this circle in the upper left corner. You can have yellow, red, green, or blue. And if you tap this pen icon, you can change the pen thickness to something either thicker or smaller if you prefer. And if you tap the eraser, you can start erasing things. And if you tap the eraser a second time, you can erase everything. A faster way to activate the eraser is to simply hold down the S Pen button. And if you're using this just to write notes and you need more space, that's perfectly fine. You can just swipe down and get a bunch more space. Besides using this for grocery lists, I also use this all the time as an engineer when I need to quickly draw out a schematic for another engineer. And as you can imagine, this is also incredibly useful for any sort of graphic or interior designer when they want to sketch out an idea.
The most powerful feature with Screen Off Memo has to do with writing down contact information or website details. But to demonstrate this, we first need to save this note. You can either tap Save in the upper right corner, or you can slide the S Pen back into the silo. Once that's done, the note's going to be saved into the Samsung Notes application. Jumping into the Samsung Notes application, we see the note that we just created. To see how powerful this is, all you have to do is hover your S Pen over the phone number, and you get a little phone icon here, so you can immediately call this number. If I hover over the email address, I'll get a mail icon to quickly send an email to that address. And if I hover over a website, I'll get this little globe icon, and I can quickly jump to that website. And this works with any handwritten note within the Samsung Notes application. So if I tap this pen icon up here to start writing, then I write a math equation out, like maybe 3 times 37 equals, and then I save the note. If I hover over that equation, I'll also get a calculator icon, and if I tap that, it'll bring that calculation right up in the calculator. Now this is especially useful for contractors who need to take a ton of different measurements to figure out how many supplies they'll need. They can just take quick rough measurements without having to do the math right there. Then later they can rip through the calculations with a calculator. And if you have a terrible handwriting like I do and you wanna quickly convert that to regular text, just tap the edit icon, scroll across the bottom until you see this squiggly line with a T icon, then tap that. It's going to analyze all the text, then show you what it got for the text and if all of it is correct, just tap convert, and it all gets converted to regular text. And if something wasn't correct, you could just tap in here and fix it. To take a look at another powerful feature within the Samsung Notes application, let's go ahead and open up a new note. On the bottom right corner, you'll see this pen icon with a T on it. If you tap this, then start handwriting anything, it'll convert all of your handwritten text to digital text. This is especially useful for people who can handwrite faster than they can type on digital keyboards. One important thing to note is that you can only write on one line at a time. If you try to write two lines on top of each other, it's not gonna be able to convert the text. So if you are gonna be doing a lot of writing like this, I recommend turning the phone sideways so you get a larger canvas to write on. When you're using this handwriting mode, you'll also get this toolbar up top, which lets you remove text, add spaces, or add carriage returns. You can also tap this little keyboard to bring up a small digital keyboard. And this would be useful if you wanted to use some unique symbols. To remove this keyboard, just tap the keyboard icon again. And this toolbar is also floating, so you could move this wherever you'd like. If you tap the settings, you can choose which language it's gonna try to convert from. And you could also change the text insertion method. So you can either have it just be part of the main body text, or you can create a new text box every time you start writing. The new text box option would be mostly useful if you were drawing something and you wanted to have the notes stay next to certain parts of the drawing. Samsung also supports handwriting gestures for editing text. So you can just draw a line through some text that you want to delete or draw an arc between two words you want to connect. And if you want to separate two characters, you can just put a little carrot in between them. If you want to see all the editing gestures, just open up your keyboard, then tap the keyboard settings gear. If you don't see it, tap these three dots here and you should see it in one of these two windows here. Once you open up the settings, scroll down until you find S Pen to text and tap that. Then tap learn how to edit with your S Pen. And here you can see all the supported gestures. This S Pen to text option brings us to the next useful feature. If you enable this, you get the ability to use handwriting in literally any other text box in any application. Alternatively, you can just tap the T icon in the keyboard to turn the keyboard into a handwriting canvas. If your handwriting is being converted faster than you can write, or it's not being converted fast enough, you can adjust the recognition delay by tapping the settings icon, scrolling down to the bottom, tapping handwriting, and then either increasing or decreasing the recognition time. And if it's not doing a great job recognizing all of your handwriting, try changing the candidate type from recognition to prediction and see if that helps. If your screen is already on and you wanna take a quick note, all you have to do is hold the S Pen button down and double tap the screen. This will open up a Samsung Note in a pop-up window that can be moved around your screen as well as resized. And if you scroll across the bottom, you can see that this has all the same editing options that are available in the full Samsung Notes application. If you tap the three dots in the upper right corner, then tap page template, you get access to a bunch of different templates. And if you tap one of these, they'll act as the background for your note. You could then pinch to zoom in to make it easier to use the template. If you tap the three dots again, then go back into the page template and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that there is a downloaded option and a little plus icon. If you tap the plus icon, you can go into your photos, then jump into one of your device folders and select an image, change the opacity of that image, and then you can also adjust the image, zoom in or out if you want to, 
And then when you tap done, that image will become your background. Let me zoom back out here so you can see the whole thing. And that image will simply repeat for each new page. If you've taken a bunch of notes and you wanna quickly scroll through them without the S Pen drawing on the screen, you can tap this little reading icon up here. Now when you scroll with the S Pen, it'll actually just scroll up and down instead of drawing. Alternatively, you can keep the reading mode off and just use your finger to scroll. If you wanna write notes based on something that's on a different screen, you can tap this blue bar at the top, then tap these two squares and change the opacity of the note. So if I bring this down, I can see what's behind it, but still write on my note. If you'd rather have your note be next to another application instead of on top of it, you can open up the other application, have your note on top of that, then tap the bar on top, then tap this little icon here, and this will open up the two windows in split screen view so you can take a note while scrolling through your other application. And if you want that window to pop back out, just tap the blue bar again and tap the icon on the top left, and it brings it back into pop-up view. You can also quickly minimize your note to get it out of the way, then tap it again to reopen it. And if you wanna jump straight into the notes application for this, just tap the bar and tap the expand icon. Now, when I back out of this, it's gonna take me straight back into the notes application. When it comes to working with PDFs, the S Pen is incredibly powerful, especially when you pair that with the Samsung Notes application that we were looking at earlier. So if I tap to open this PDF and select to open it in the Samsung Notes application, it'll load the PDF into the Samsung Notes application and give me all of the editing features that Samsung Notes has to offer. That means I can select a pen down here and quickly sign something. I can choose different pen colors, sizes, and types to highlight different things, point different things out if I'm reviewing something. I could even use this pen icon down here to create a new text box and convert my handwriting directly to digital text and place that box wherever I'd like. Speaking of converting things, if I were to draw a shape, then hold the S Pen on the screen, it'll automatically fix the shape to look better. And this works for a ton of different shapes, including stars. If you have several different pen colors and styles that you use often when working with PDFs, you can actually set those as favorites by tapping the pen icon, choosing the color and size you want, then tapping this star icon right here. Now I've already set up a bunch of other favorites, so if I X out of this and simply press the S Pen button, you'll see that it changes to my other favorite pens every time I press the button. And if I double press the button, it switches back to the previous pen. And one important thing to note about this is that you have to keep your S Pen away from the screen when you press the button. Otherwise, if you bring your pen too close, then press the button, it's just going to activate the eraser. If you ever wanna edit your favorite pens, just tap the pen icon again, then tap this favorites icon in the upper left corner, and you can see all of your favorite pens. From here, you can either add to them or delete some. And while we're here, I wanna quickly point out another great feature with the S Pen is that if you hover over any icons, it'll actually tell you what that icon is for. And this is especially useful in the pen section because you can hover over the pen and see what type of pen it is. So here's a calligraphy pen. This is just a regular pencil. And all the way over here, you have a calligraphy brush. When you're done marking up the PDF, tap this back arrow in the upper left corner to exit the editing mode, then tap the three dots in the upper right corner, then tap save as file, and you can save this as a PDF file, keep it as a Samsung Notes file, even convert it to a Microsoft Word or PowerPoint file, or convert it to an image or text file if you wanna send it to someone who doesn't have a PDF viewer. So this is far more powerful than the Adobe PDF application when it comes to marking up a PDF. This is so powerful that I exclusively use this application on my Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra when I'm reviewing schematics for work because it just makes the process so much faster. So if you're not using Samsung Notes yet, I highly recommend that you start. If you wanna select some text but long pressing doesn't work, instead, you can try holding down the S Pen button and dragging to select the text that way. In many cases, this will allow you to actually select the text and copy it. If you guys found this video helpful, consider subscribing and turning on notifications because I have even more deep dive coverage coming up soon for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.